Hey guys, what's going on? Jeb here, and in today's video, we're going to be doing a little bit of technical analysis on Bitcoin and the cryptocurrency markets, and more specifically, we're going to be talking about the longer-term technicals for Bitcoin, because in today's video, I'm going to be explaining to you guys exactly why I want Bitcoin to crash and burn and lose so much valuation. I want to see Bitcoin down here on coin market cap not being worth tens of billions of dollars, not being worth billions of dollars, but being worth millions of dollars. And in today's video, I'm going to explain to you exactly why I would love to see Bitcoin break $3,000. I would love to see Bitcoin break $2,000. I would love to see Bitcoin break $1,000 and head below the all-time high of the previous bull market that was around $1,200. And I'm also going to be explaining in this video exactly why you want the exact same thing, even if you don't know it yet. We're going to be talking about all of that and more in today's video. So if you enjoyed today's video, Without much further ado, let's go ahead and get right into it. Guys, before you go calling me heathens in the comments and a crypto trader or anything, I need to give you one word that we're going to be basing this entire video off of, and that word is none other than the P word. You probably heard this word your entire life. You probably heard this word so much that you would call it a cliche, but one thing you will learn in life is that oftentimes cliches are cliches for a reason. That word is patience. Patience is the most important tool that anyone can have. And in fact, I would say that there are certain mindsets that humans can adopt that give them absolute superpowers to control themselves and manipulate the world around them for the better or for whatever they want to do. And one of the most important things that you can have in this world is patience, also with a healthy dose of diligence. You want to be able to do both of those. You have to be able to work very hard and you have to be able to put off that gratification and be patient and wait for your return for a very long time. And that's exactly why I would love to see Bitcoin crash because let's go ahead and talk about this. Guys, what you have to realize is that just because it sounds weird, I haven't really talked about this kind of concept in a long time, none of my opinions on Bitcoin and cryptocurrency have changed, just by the way. I am extremely bullish on Bitcoin. I love Bitcoin to the moon and back, and I believe Bitcoin is going to be going to the moon. Hopefully it doesn't come back. But I do believe in the cryptocurrency revolution that we're seeing. I do believe in the blockchain industry. I do believe in the cryptocurrency space. I do believe in the community we've set up here. And I do believe in the mission of the developers and the original people that founded this space of bringing about the cryptocurrency revolution and bringing cryptocurrency to the masses and really doing everything that we've set out to do and we've talked about here on the channel over the last year or so. I really do still believe in all of that. And the reason that I would love to see Bitcoin crash is a very selfish reason. I will give you that. It's a very selfish reason, but I think it's also a very non-selfish reason and good for the community as well. The reason that I would love to see Bitcoin crash is very simple. So this video isn't really me explaining to you why. It's explaining to you why I think you should agree with me. I would love to see Bitcoin crash simply because I can buy more Bitcoin, guys. If Bitcoin goes and crashes below $3,600, if it crashes down to $2,000, it crashes down to $1,000, Oh well, Bitcoin crashed. Guess what? You can short on the way down and long on the way up. You can make just as much money in a bear market as you can in a bull market. It's not about whether the market is going up or going down that determines whether or not you can make money. It's actually the volatility, which is why I've been very happy lately that the volatility has returned. Because in low, in low volatile markets, it's harder to make money. And in high volatile markets, it's easier to make money. A lot of people think that when the market's going bullish, it's easy to make money. When the market's going bearish, it's hard to make money. That's actually wrong. It's dependent on how much volatility there is because you can short and do the exact opposite of buying and selling. I would love to see Bitcoin crash down to $2,000 or $1,000 or even lower because I still believe in this space. I really, really believe in cryptocurrency. I don't believe it's going anywhere. I think it's going to do great things for the world. And honestly, if Bitcoin crashed down to $2,000, $1,000, $500, even close to $0, I don't think that that would hurt the long term. Uh, I don't think that would hurt the longevity of Bitcoin. In fact, that might be a good thing for it. I'm not going to necessarily say it would be. That's a whole other video in and of itself. But I think it would be a. I think it would be good for my pocketbook anyway because I'd be allowed to get more Bitcoin, and you guys would too. Let's go ahead and do a little bit of short-term technical analysis here, and then we're going to jump back on into the technicals. As you guys can see here, my friend Bart is showing up on the chart. We'll see if this actually goes through and plays a part in our technical analysis over the next couple of days but we're going to have to see what happens. I've already made a video yesterday detailing what I believe is going to happen here. I said I'm ever so slightly more bearish and bardish on Bitcoin right now than I am bullish. I think there's like a maybe 55% chance that Bitcoin breaks bearish here rather than going north. We're going to see what happens there. We'll have to see if my little friend Bart here becomes a reality. But nevertheless, I do want to jump on over to CoinMarketCap, talk about a couple of things here, and then get back into the main point of today's video. And one of the main points of today's video is also that Bitcoin is up by about a third of a percent in today's video. But the more important thing than that is that Ethereum Ethereum is actually the number two cryptocurrency again. We've seen this kind of battle raging between Ethereum and XRP over the last couple of weeks, over really, really over the last couple of months, the majority of 2019. We've seen these two kind of flipping each other. XRP was up here at the top for about a month or so, and now Ethereum has had a good day and it's now $200 million above XRP. It's really funny. We talk about 
how retraced the market is and how how much valuation has left the space, but still we're looking at hundreds of millions of dollars moving in and out of the market every single day. Just because Bitcoin is retraced a little bit doesn't mean it's anywhere near dead. There is still a lot of money in this space, guys. You have to realize this is not a US market. This is not a uh, British market. This is not a EU market. This is not a Chinese market. This is a global market and there's a lot of money here. Anyway, if we sort by change over the last 24 hours, we see Komodo's in the double digit green and the majority of the market is in fact green as well. We see one double digit loser in ARC. Not a whole lot I want to talk about here on Coin Market Cap other than the volume. I do want to talk about the volume because like I was saying earlier, volume is the most important thing. It's not really all volume because volume is nor normally correlative, uh, correlated with volatility is actually far more important than the direction the market is going, in my opinion, for making money. Because you can short the market on the way down, you can long it on the way up. But let's go ahead and get back into the main topic of today's video, that being Bitcoin crashing and patience. Guys, I want to start doing more mindset things on the channel because what I think a lot of people in the cryptocurrency space are missing, and I'm not pointing any names here, every single one of us, including myself, is guilty of this. We don't talk enough about mindset when we're moving into these markets. It's very important that you understand how your own brain works. Let me say that again. It's very under important how you under it's very important that you understand how your own brain works because not only do you have to understand how your brain works so that you can understand how you will approach these markets, and I'll elaborate on that in a second. You also have to understand how everyone else's brains work because it's very important that you understand the other forces that are moving in this market. It's not just you that's operating in this market. There are many other people that are operating in this market. There are people buying. There are people selling. There are people dumping. There are people, uh, but there are whales coming in and buying things. There are, there are brains that are working on regulation. There are brains that are working on the technology. It's very important that you understand human psychology, human um, uh, human psychology, the human brain, every every way that the human uh, sociology. Uh, the, all, of, all of these aspects that really drive markets. And one of the main reasons that I want to start talking about mindset a little bit more is because so many people get into the market and they say, okay, well, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to sit down. I'm going to work for eight hours a day reading charts. I'm going to say, screw all my friends. I'm not going to go out. I'm, I'm not going to get dressed for the next month. I'm going to do nothing but hone in and I'm going to learn. I'm going to learn me some Bitcoin. I'm going to buy some Bitcoin and I'm going to become an expert trader and I'm going to go all Wolf of Wall Street on these kids. And that's just not the way that works, guys. It's not like the movies. You have to understand how your own brain works and you have to have the proper mindset when you're going into these markets. And that's why I wanted to talk about this in today's video so I could build into this. I would love to see Bitcoin crash to $2,000. $1,000, $500. Guys, let me tell you something. Bitcoin and cryptocurrency in this YouTube is not my only business. I, I think it would be silly if it were. So I am very much, I'm very okay if Bitcoin crashes down to $2,000 and $1,000 and $500. If it does that, then that provides a much better investing opportunity for me. And because I understand the P word, the patience word, I am more than happy to wait another five or 10 years for Bitcoin to bring about the kind of massive, insane returns that I know are coming. I'm very happy to do that. But in the meantime, we got to start working on our mindset and building our ability to look at these markets properly. Because one thing I also see a lot is that whenever the market goes into a downtrend, for example, right here, when Bitcoin was just above $6,000, we had our level of support here. You know, we were doing our technical analysis. We were kind of duping along. We didn't have a whole lot of volatility. Volatility was very low. It was hard to make money shorting or longing in that market. A lot of people were very, very scared when Bitcoin crashed and fell off this cliff below $6,000. Guys, what you're going to realize in markets, in life, in just about anything, is that the people that freak out when it's time, when the time comes that you have to get something done, those are the people that are not going to be able to succeed. Because if you can't stay calm under pressure and keep your emotions out of what needs to be logical, and markets are very logical things. They're emotional things, but if you're logical, then you'll be able to trade in them a lot better. If you are able to stay calm under pressure, and Bitcoin breaking $6,000 was a very pressing time. I remember it very vividly. A lot of people were very, very scared here. If you're able to have the proper mindset so that you don't get scared and you see every challenge not as a threat but as an opportunity then you will be far more successful in these markets it's very important that you guys understand your mindset and this is such a massive topic that i can't get into all of it today which is why i'm trying to touch on a couple of different points in it it's so very important that you guys understand how your own brain works and that you understand how to approach these markets not only from a logical technical analysis point of view which is very important and that's why i talk about it so much but also from a mindset point of view so that you so that you don't burn yourself out and so that you're able to continue in these markets without getting lambasted by all the crashes that happen sometimes and all the bad news that sometimes comes out, all the bearishness, whatever. You have to be careful. You have to be careful about your emotions running you. You have to be careful about getting emotional in trades. And you have to be careful about being run out of the market because you were because you were freaking out about how uh, about how big Bart's head is right here. You have to be very careful about that. There's a lot of different things we can talk about here, guys, and I will be talking about them over the next couple of months as we move 
more into kind of the mindset uh, field. Of course, we're going to continue doing technical analysis. Nothing's really going to change mm -hmm. there. But I do want to talk about this some more because I think it's very, very important. Tell me in the comment section down below, guys, if you are ready for Bitcoin to crash down to $3,000, crash down to $2,000, crash down to $1,000. I am by no means saying that that's going to happen. So don't misconstrue what I'm saying here. I am by no stretch of the imagination saying that I believe Bitcoin is going to go that low. I'm just saying that if it were to go that low, it wouldn't bother me a bit. I'd actually be very happy because I can get literally three times more Bitcoin for my dollar and really have a lot more Bitcoin moving on into the future. Because one of the last things I want to talk about here is another mindset principle. And this is something that comes straight out of psychology textbooks. You guys, if you if you have gone through psychology in college, if you've studied psychology on your own, this comes straight out of textbooks. This comes straight out of mentors. This is a very popular mindset thing, and it's ridiculously important. The ability to delay gratification until a future date when you will have more gratification then than you have now is very important. Let's say, for example, that instead of playing video games eight hours a day, you go out, and this might get a little real for some people. It gets a little real for me. Instead of going out and spending eight hours a day playing video games, you spend eight hours a day working on your business. And then you do that for 10 years. If you were to work on your business for eight hours a day for 10 years, or if you were to play video games for eight hours a day for 10 years, well, maybe you'd get a challenge during League of Legends. But if you work for eight hours a day for 10 years on your business, you'd probably be worth eight or nine figures. You'd probably have an amazing family, a loving wife or husband. You'd probably have kids. You'd probably have a, a beautiful house. Maybe you'd have a cool car. Maybe you'd have, uh, you, maybe you'd be able to travel a lot. Maybe you'd be able to do whatever it is you always wanted to do. Maybe you'd be able to help your family. Maybe you'd be able to go out there and start homeless shelters and help people. Maybe you'd be able to do all those things. But instead, you decide to spend eight hours a day playing League of Legends or playing WoW or playing Dota or whatever game you play or whatever game you don't play. Maybe you spend eight hours a day uh, doing absolutely nothing productive. I don't know. Maybe you watch television. Maybe you're watching Netflix. The point is here is that you have to be able to delay gratification because the person that worked for eight hours a day on their business, instead of spending eight hours a day enjoying themselves playing League of Legends or whatever game or, or doing something unproductive, watching television, whatever it is, instead of doing that, they spent eight hours a day doing something that was perhaps a little bit less enjoyable at the moment. But over the long term, it brought about massive rewards because they have won difference between the person because there's one difference between the person who was able to work on their business for eight hours a day and one person that uh, seeked gratification for eight hours a day. The person who worked on their business for eight hours a day was willing to delay that gratification for five years, for 10 years, for 20 years, for 30 years. And that's so important in the realm of business. And it's also equally important in the realm of stock trading in cryptocurrency trading in markets in analysis it's so very important here too and it doesn't get enough light so i want to start shining the light on it it is so important i cannot stress this enough it is so important that you are able to see bitcoin go down to three thousand dollars go down to two thousand dollars go down to one one thousand dollars go down to ten dollars maybe you can see bitcoin go down to one dollar but if the fundamentals are still there and if the future is still bright for bitcoin and you're able to delay the gratification of investing now and waiting to see that return for five years ten years twenty years 30 years, 40 years, however long you want to wait, if you're able to delay that gratification, you will be successful in whatever you do. I promise you that. There have been psychological studies that have gone and tested babies at the age of two and done and done experiments on them to see how long they are, how good they are at delaying gratification with marshmallows. You can go and read about this. The, the babies that were better at delaying gratification disproportionately became far more successful than, than the babies that weren't. Part of this is born, part of this is nature, part of this is nurture. And you can always change. You can always change yourself and be a lot better at this. You just have to start working on it. Anyway, guys, this wasn't a whole lot of technical analysis in today's video. It was more of a mindset video. I think I've already talked about that enough in today's video, though. Tell me in the comment section down below if you'd like to see a lot more of these videos because this is something that I'm very passionate about, the whole mindset side of this. And it's something that I really, like I said, I don't think gets enough light in the cryptocurrency space. And I think it's very, very important that it does. So I think we're going to start talking about some of this more as we continue moving on here through the accumulation phase on into hopefully what is a new bull market starting in 2020 or 2021, maybe even late 2019. We'll just have to see what happens there. Anyway, guys, tell me what you think of my drawing of Bart here. I think it is absolutely uncanny myself. I do want to thank each and every single one of you for watching. As always, I have some coffee right here that I'm about to go finish when I finish recording. And I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.